This is Aaron Hudson with ITS Partners. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Altiris SMP71 to ServiceNow integration that ITS has developed to enable you to leverage your existing computer resources in the SMP platform within the ServiceNow platform. There are several advantages to that. The first being that once you've, you have those resources from your SMP server into your ServiceNow platform, you can reference those within your ServiceNow instance without having to access the data in both places. The other advantage is that once your data has been imported into your ServiceNow instance, you can then take action on those items, such as delivering software via the service catalog. First off, I'm going to take a look at the computer resources themselves. So if you'll notice, when I log into my SMP server, I have several computer resources, list resources listed. A majority of these resources are prefaced by SYM and then a significant number after those. Um, you also notice that we have host one in our inventory as well. Those machines via our import tool can be directly imported into your CI data within ServiceNow, therefore allowing you to view, edit, and access those inside the ServiceNow platform. And you also have those changes be reflected over on the SMP as well. First, we're going to take a look at those resources in ServiceNow. So you will notice as I do a search for SYM, the prefix of our machines we saw in our inventory on our SMP, you'll notice those resources are also reflected. For example, 6564503. We can then drill down and see the resource data associated with those resources within ServiceNow. The other advantage of being able to import the resource data into your ServiceNow instance is that you then have the ability to take action on those, such as from a break fix perspective, you could deliver software directly from an incident page. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the incidents themselves and go ahead and take a look at my open incidents. I have an example incident here where I've created a ticket for a user and in this context, we would be a technician taking calls in a service center that would be in charge of resolving issues when a user calls in. So for example, in this case, we have a user that's getting prompted for the latest Java version to be installed. When Aaron Hudson has called me, I can associate host one, the machine that he is currently on, to the incident itself. And you'll see that we tie those together by the correlation ID. In this instance, if we have a user that is requesting Java, but they do not have access to install the application, or even the technician themselves do not have the ability to do that, we can create a related link UI action that allows them to deliver the Java software directly to the machine via the SMP server without any further user interaction. So before we do that, let's take a look at our current workstation that this user is on. He is currently on host one, which is the machine we're currently viewing here. And if you notice on my add or remove programs list, I currently do not have any Java software installed. So let's fix that now. As a technician, we're gonna go ahead and click the link to deliver the Java software. We'll be asked to confirm that we want that software to be run on that particular host. We go ahead and say, okay. And what you'll notice is that there is a uh, info message this at the top of the screen to tell us that the deliver Java software task was sent to the machine. You also notice we have that logged in the history so we can tell what technician initiated what action. So in just a second, if we take a look at our semantic management agent, you'll notice that the Java software is now currently running. So we're delivering the installation for Java 170 over to the affected machine to resolve the user's issue. Now, in a break fix perspective, this is important because a majority of the time, technicians are spending countless hours, even uh, days, in a row resolving the same type issues that can be automated via a similar fashion. So if you notice now, over in our agent, we notice that the, uh, the install completed, the result was a success, and if we do a refresh on our add or remove programs list, you now see the Java 7 update is now installed. So in this scenario, we could then say, okay, we've delivered the software to your machine. Please confirm that everything's working. And if it is, we can go ahead and resolve that incident without ever having to access the user's machine. The other piece would be allowing our users to be able to 
initiate a software request via the service catalog and then have that software automatically delivered to their machine once that has been approved. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my service catalog. And if you notice, we have a software category within our service catalog listing where we can request resources for a corporate laptop or computer. Um, if you notice, we have a couple of items in the service catalog and under each of these we've indicated that this software can be deployed automatically via the semantic management agent once it has been approved. In this instance, I'm going to pretend that I'm a user initiating a software catalog request and I need Notepad++ installed on my machine. I can quickly and easily add that to my cart, but if you notice, if I don't specify the machine to be installed in, I will be prompted to do that before I can add that to my cart. So I know that I'm now currently on host one, which is our machine we're using in the, for the demonstration that does not have Notepad++ currently installed. I'll select that machine. Again, I can see the details of that particular computer once I've selected it. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my cart. So you notice I have Notepad++. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed to checkout because that's currently all that I need. And you'll notice that I have a request submitted for that particular application. If I go to my request to view this, you'll notice that we have the workflow set to automatically approve any items that the total price is less than $1,000. In our case, Notepad++ was zero. Our price is zero, as you notice down below. Therefore, the workflow automatically approves the request and will automatically kick off the software delivery job to install the software. So if you notice, if we flip over to our management agent again, we already have the installation for Notepad++ currently running and is currently doing the install. So shortly after this completes, we can then go back and refresh our add or remove programs list and we should then see that the Notepad++ application is now installed for the user simply by submitting a service catalog request and once that approval is complete, actually initiating the software delivery job to install that automatically to the machine. If you notice, our install was successful. We now have the software installed. I can do a refresh. You notice I have Notepad++ installed now. And if I go and click on the programs list, I can actually open up Notepad++ and my application is now there. The third piece to the integration is that we now have the ability to, within the computer's listing or within the computer record, we can then take action to keep the records in sync in both applications. So I'm going to go to my computers list, computers list again, and I'm going to go ahead and do a search for one of our SYM machines. And over on my server, we're also going to go and view the record for that particular machine as well on our SMP server. So we're going to go down to the bottom here and pick um, 4531. So if we look for SYM 4531, we go to the next page and open up 4531. You'll notice that because we have an associated ID indicating that this exists in the SMP platform as well, we have a link that allows us to delete the SMP record as well as the ServiceNow computer record with one click so that that record is removed from both systems automatically without having to switch over to each application to do that. So if I go ahead and click this link and say this computer I no longer need in either system, click the link, it will initiate the task to remove that from within the SMP as well as ServiceNow. So you notice we're taken back to the previous screen where we, know we no longer have 4531 and if we do a refresh on our computers list and scroll down, you'll notice that we no longer have 4531 in our Altiris inventory as well. That's all for this video. Please stay tuned to further videos where we show demonst and demonstrate additional features of the ITS Altiris to ServiceNow integration package. Thank you.